Welcome to Bermshed 2.0. Uh, we uh, had one post that was left from Bermshed 1.0 and we thought it would be fine, but it turned out it was not fine. This is a powerful lesson in do your earthworks first. The leader on Bermshed 1.0 was certain that he could beat the rain. So he was going to put in a whole bunch of posts and do the earthworks later because putting in posts is far more fun than doing earthworks. Unfortunately, uh, the rain came when he wasn't expecting it. And so the post got really wet, really, really wet. It sat in probably two feet of water for about a week. So it got nice and soggy. And our technique for preserving posts back then was not as awesome as it is now. So the wood got really soggy and then the sogginess was held against the wood for a long time. And after six years, we finally detected rot and it was time to take the post out. I know that we've tested this wall of logs many times to see if there's any rot. And I happen to know one of the logs is rotten, but I don't remember which one. So let's find out. Let's test for rot. Here I've got my Leatherman. I'm ready to go. Solid, 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 not solid, squishy. It looks like we've tested this so many times. It's it's, uh, oh man, that is, that is, ooh, look how soft that spot is. So this is, this is a rotten stick. Now, it's possible that if we had peeled it before putting it here, that it would still be in good shape. Um, it wouldn't be rotten. But it's also possible that even if we peeled it, it would still have rotted. So there's going to be some that rot. But we also have quite a few that are doing really good. Those are all solid. So we've decided to leave the one rotten log here. The important thing is, is that what I do to test for rot is I just stab it. Good solid wood, you can't get your knife in very far. I'm getting this, it's going in like an eighth of an inch. That's good solid wood. So the mission is we need to replace the rotten post. And how do you replace a rotten post when it's got tons and tons of dirt sitting on top of it and tons and tons of dirt sitting behind it, trying to push this way as well as from above? Powerful contracts with gravity. Step one, we've got to shore up the good wood. So we have these house jacks for whenever we need to replace a post. And we put lots of house jacks in to make it extra, extra, extra safe. We also shored up in a bunch of different ways. We, we gave ways for the house jacks to uh, uh, have good solid purchases. So we put a log down here and we put this house jack in here in order to put that whole log right there. That log is a freestanding log that we just added in and so is that one. And each of those has two house jacks and these two are going to this post which is shored up behind it. And then the lower pieces are putting into these logs, which are placed very low, where it's going to be good and solid posts down there. And these are nice fat logs, which we'll reuse for other projects here once this is over. I count a total of six house jacks holding everything in place so we can take the old rotten log out and replace it. The old post was right here. Um, it was rotten. It still had its bark on it. And we've since come to the conclusion that if you remove the bark from a post that's going to be in contact with dirt, then your chances of it rotting are going to be greatly reduced. Probably about a good 25% reduction in probability of rot if you peel a log before putting it in the soil. Um, so this one had, had rot down below, and so we needed to take it out. When we took it out, the first thing we did is we moved this beam up like an extra inch just to kind of give us a little bit of breathing room so that when we put the new post in, we've got this extra inch because once, once the new post is in, it's going to settle a little bit no matter how much we pack it below. And it's a little tricky to pack below when you're in a little hole especially with all kinds of convoluted angles because we're replacing a post, not putting in a brand new post. Step two, remove the rotten post. Step three, 
dig a big ass hole where the new post is going to go. Let's go a little deeper because we've got a new technique. The old technique for posts was weak. I'm not even going to talk about it. And our new technique for posts in the ground is very gravel intensive. Um, and there's a whole other video that we're making about that. But we decided to go four feet down into the ground here, um, just to give it a little extra strength. We made a hole in the ground five feet deep. And at the bottom of the hole, we put a bunch of great big rocks. And then we put a bunch of gravel on top of those rocks. All those rocks and gravel took up about a foot. So the final post is going to be in the ground about four feet deep. We put that on top of the gravel in the bottom, and then we packed and packed and packed as much as we could. And when the new post went in, then there's a very tight, tight fit. And so uh, hopefully we're going to be able to, I mean, I can see that there's still about three quarters of an inch of gap right here, even after all the packing that we did. So when we lower this, there's going to be a three quarters of an inch drop. And then as time passes, this is probably going to settle another inch. When digging the hole for the new post, we have to make a big angle come out this way because the post is going to be fed in like this and then put up. So this is going to be kind of a weird shaped hole. A lot of the hole is coming out this far as we go and we put the post in and pop it into place. While we're here, let's replace the knee brace. The old version would have a single post going from the bottom of that post up to about two thirds of the way up this post. Our new version is that we lay in a horizontal piece of wood, a horizontal log, and we cut a notch out of it and we have a shorter knee brace. We think it's stronger and more effective and it gives a way to walk in between the cells. We're going to use our technique with the gravel on this horizontal post. We're going to put gravel underneath it so if any water gets in here the water will pass through the gravel and keep our log dry. I think replacing a post in a berm shed or a wafati or an ailer structure is um, you know a pain in the ass just like it would be with a conventional home. If you're going to replace some wall in a conventional home and it's a load-bearing wall it's going to have some challenges to it. Um, it's difficult, it's a hassle, but it's not impossible. And um, I think that this might be the eighth or ninth post uh, that we've replaced for all of our projects uh, in this fashion. So we've kind of gotten used to how to do it and getting it done, doing a good job. If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com where we talk about roundwood timber framing, homesteading, and permaculture all the time. Just stab it.